Um, let's see. I thought I'd start my set with the poem from Spring and All, which was published in 1923. Um, yeah, that's enough. To say about that. The rose is obsolete, but each petal ends in an edge, a double facet cementing the grooved columns of air. The edge cuts without cutting, meets nothing, itself in metal or porcelain, whither it ends. But if it ends, the start is begun, that, so that to engage roses becomes a geometry. Sharper, neater, more cutting, figured in majolica, the broken plate glazed with a rose. Somewhere the sense makes copper roses, steel roses. The rose carried weight of love, but love is at an end of roses. If it is, if is at the edge of the petal that love waits, crisp work to defeat laboredness, fragile, plucked, moist, half-raised, cold, precise, touching. What? The place between the petal's edge and the, from the petal's edge a line starts, that being of steel infinitely fine, infinitely rigid, penetrates the Milky Way without contact, lifting from it, neither hanging nor pushing. The fragility of the flower, unbruised, penetrates spaces. No, that's from Spring and All, 1923, one of the great documents of uh, uh, modernism, actually. No, this is much easier. <laughs> uh, first ode for a very young lady. Shemming accuracy, I was going to say she is spherical. She's not. She consists of two spheres, joined together but by not much of a net and six symmetrical protuberances, ears, arms, legs, plus a small knob in the center of the smaller sphere, the one on top. But this laborious description of her shape gives you no idea. She's round. She's simply round and moves in a manner like in a manner not unlike rolling, slowly advancing while remains seated very upright towards um, towards what attracts her attention. Right now, the silent television set. And there she is on the screen in full though slightly muted color. It is without question the best program of the day. Of course, I am 30 years older, so our relationship is deceptively easy. Countless complications will follow. I hope they will. I wish for decades of trouble with you, my daughter. Wish it in the teeth of our monstrous days that the screen's daily images of incessant war and destruction, <clears throat> and destruction 
will fade and be superseded by faces and forms of another degree worthy of you, your happy geometry. poet these days is a little like playing the harmonica. <laughs> when we were little poets, we told ourselves, one day we'll have a big book just like the big poets. <laughs> and now we have big books. But are we big poets now? Don't make me laugh. Ha <laughs> ha. Though even Charles Olson has not been the same since the academics ate him. <laughs> oh, I do not wish to remember, have trouble recalling, find it hard to believe. What a day it was, flags were flying, bands were playing, and all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. And that was first written by Monroe Leaf, author of Ferdinand the Bull. Pygmy hut. Heavy drops fell from the trees and made a plopping sound as they hit the poodles. Shouldn't that be puddles? No, not puddles. Poodles. <laughs> Heavy drops fell from the trees and made a plopping sound as they hit the poodles. That's an instance of uh, creative, possibly creative mistakes. <laughs> um, let's see here. And I, I, I marked way too many, way too many bobs. Um, for the allotted 20, 20 minutes. But here's one. Well, I guess dying will be just one of those not a whole lot of fun things to do. <laughs> <laughs> but autumn is when. I would like to come back, if I could, to watch the stars come out and rahar my loves with all of you. And that's rahar, old Occitan, to babble, to joke, origin of to rail against, but also of railer. <coughs> and sit down again. Then you can watch the dust settle. Or wait for the Irishman to come round, knock on your door again. Twice he's asked me first the time, and then would you know of any place I could get a job, sir? Labor in, that is. They won't take him. He looks too purgatorial. <laughs> he stays over from here. Area where they have strikes. <coughs> to typewriter Benny, better than radio for company. Sheets of translation pile up, too many words, 
Too many other men's words bang through my head. Why don't they learn English in Finland? Why don't they learn Finnish, Swedish, German in England, old and new? They just being kind to you, that's all. They don't learn, you earn. <laughs> the old housekeeper three, the old housekeeper lady downstairs, likes the stamps. She says, could you let me have them if you're going to throw them away anyway? Mr. Burroughs, she says, always did that. He always gave me the steps. He got a lot of mail, too. <laughs> I give them to her. We are Burroughs, Hollow, Sarikoski, Ball. We are Mrs. Hardy's nice writing gentlemen. <laughs> Four, white smoke from Battersea Power Station. Rises, moon, star, London city light, beam from the airport sweeps the sky. I switch the room light on and off and on. Light dark, light dark. It occurs to me I'm trying to tell you what's going, what goes on inside me. Out there, they'll suspect a Chinese spy. Ha! Battersea beast on its back, pushing vapor puffs through the soles of its feet. For fun, five. Uh, what do I say for fun? <laughs> five. <laughs> Go through my things, God knows what you'll find when I'm not here. I'm not here in this poem. I'm in another room writing praises of their loveliness, of and terror, the ones that dance through my mind, not endlessly, but to be one, and one with them I want to be. I want to be one. I want her to be one when the voice begins. She is and she dances. I am the voice. I praise. There is no mind. Six. Two men in gray suits who have come to look at me through their eyes and say, Mr. H, is this yours? You know, they're illegal in this country. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> well, they are. You better get rid of it. Okay. They go. And I think it is a good thing to have more than one room. What would they say if they found what I had in the other poem? <laughs> Helsinki, 1940. Exploding, shattering, burning, big lights in the sky. And this was Heaven's Gate? No, no, it's just the front door. Same old front door, you know, from the daytime. And we're just waiting for a lull in the action to cross the yard, get down to the shelter and meet the folks, all the other folks from all the other apartments. And there was a young woman, at least 10 years older, he thought very beautiful. Blankets and wooden beams and crackling radios and chatter it was better than heaven. It was being safe in the earth, surrounded by many, all of whom really felt like living. And this one is for Tom Rivers. I think I'll end with this one. Um, it's the first section of, uh, of a poem uh, titled sequence title uh, or to focus the animals or the pursuers by changing their dream cassettes <laughs> old tibetan trick <laughs> <laughs> for tom river cold and windy cloud with delicate cotton wool monkey face drifting by frittering violins on the radio Tape drifting by the magnetic heads. 
and into the spaces between other heads, magnetic, electric, from here to everywhere, possibly back and on out. What is it like? What is it like? Some recall a musical theme by having the score's image appear before them, then reading it. It is conceivable that we call remembering in a human being consists in her seeing herself, mind's eye, looking up things in a book. Thus, what she reads in that book is what she remembers. Wittgenstein's Zettel, scrap, 653, Estuche Inglés, Is the baby out yet? No, not yet. When they listen to it, it must dimly remind them, tape drifting, Zettel drifting, someone blown clean down the block, shrieking with merriment shock. Thank <laughs> you.